Well, they all have things to promote, right? Uh, Tell me about it. Uh, yeah, I think most celebrities have movies or records. So um, you'd be surprised, though. You think that people are shy about talking about their personal lives, but they actually like talking about it. It's like free therapy. So the whole public to yeah. see and to view. If you have any problems you want to tell me about, we can... Well, me? <laughs> oh, not at all. Now, what's the full title of the book? It's called Turning Point, Pivotal Moments in the Lives of America's Celebrities. Now, would you say that uh, the most famous celebrity of them all was Elizabeth Taylor? Well, she's, she's on the cover of the book. And it was a very touching interview because she talks about uh, the last time she went to visit Rock Hudson and that his brain, she said mercifully, had... Um, had gone, uh, which was a relief because he was in so much pain. And uh, she makes a very good point that, you know, she says that uh, people should not blame uh, gay men for AIDS, which a lot of people still do, that it's uh, a heterosexual disease all over the world. And uh, as you know, she's raised more than $35 million for AIDS research, which I think is wonderful. Did she mention anything about Michael Jackson in the book? No, this, is, uh, this book came out pre-Michael Jackson problems. He was still a little angel when the book was published. Why is she defending him so? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, first of all, I don't think anyone quite knows what really happened. And uh, I, I think friends should stick up for one another, don't you? Yes, I do. So I think it's nice. Now, some of the other celebrities you cover is Cher, Christopher Reeve, Richard Simmons, Tony Curtis, Peter Allen, Calvin Klein, Joan Rivers, Malcolm Forbes, and Kate Hepburn. Wow. Some of them aren't even... Still here, are they? Malcolm Forbes uh, uh, talked about the importance of taking risks in life, that you should never hold back. And he also talked about not fearing death, and then no more than three months after the interview, he died. It was kind of eerie. Peter Allen also talked about how meeting Judy Garland and later marrying uh, Liza Minnelli was a major turning point in his career and his life, and he died, as you know, of throat cancer a few years ago. Was it throat cancer or AIDS? I think the specific thing he actually died from was throat cancer. Also in the book, another person who died was Ryan White, the little boy, the 15-year-old boy who had AIDS, and I interviewed his mother after he um, died. And I would say of any interview that affected me the, me the most emotionally, it was interviewing this, this woman, his mother, who was not famous, but hearing a mother talk about losing her child to AIDS was just heartbreaking. And I think that um, they better hurry up and find a cure. Now, how did you get to meet these people? Did you do it through their PR people or what? Well, some of them I knew, and some of them I arranged through their publicists or managers. And as you know, I was the entertainment reporter at the Daily News, so it was actually easier to interview most of them than you might think. But it took about four years to do all of them. Another one that I think was very interesting is Leona Helmsley. People have such strong feelings about her. You know, is she a witch? Is she a bitch? What is she? I always thought she was nice. She once sent a long black limo to pick up my dog. She said to me, I'd like to And your you. dog was one of the little people, too. <laughs> she was one of the very little people. She's <laughs> only about a foot high. Yes. And when my grandmother was sick in the hospital, Leona sent her some beautiful roses. And she was always very kind to me. She has a wonderful sense of humor. She's a brilliant woman. And uh, if a man spoke to his employees the way she did, probably he would be considered a better executive than she was considered. Tell me about the pivotal moments in Tony Curtis's life. Tony Curtis? I can't remember. He's had quite a few. His thing was drug addiction. He was addicted to painkillers, to uh, cocaine, and to alcohol. And uh, as you know, he found great solace in oil painting. And his paintings sell for a good amount of money now. And he got uh, completely off all the pills. And recently, in the last six months, I believe, he, he got remarried. Really? How yeah. about Richard Simmons? Richard Simmons says the first time he saw a fish swimming in a tank, he wanted to know if it had fried batter on it. He, he was, it wasn't him losing all that weight? Uh, no, no his, um, his turning point was, of course, he, he at one point weighed more than 350 pounds, and I think he's only 5'7 or 5'8. And he talked about wanting to commit suicide at one point in his life and finally going to the library and finding out from a library book how he might go on a healthy diet. And of course, he's turned his own problem. You see, that's what's so interesting. They say uh, you can turn your own problem into an asset. So many of these people, I always think that if you don't have problems in your life, you actually won't succeed. Sylvester Stallone, for instance, who's in the book, was abused as a child, beaten by his father with a whip until he bled. 
And later his father told him he was stupid and it would amount to nothing. And he turned to a little thing like bodybuilding. Never ignore a little gift that your, cho that your child might have. And he turned this bodybuilding thing into, into later an acting career. Wow. What about Kate Hepburn? Well, her big thing was why she fell in love with Spencer Tracy and why she could never marry him. Of course, he was a Catholic and he couldn't get a divorce from his wife. But she wasn't a woman who wanted to be married. She said that she always liked living alone. And of course, she's lived alone ever since he died, which I think was in 1960. How old is she now? She's 87. Wow. I once went to her house and told her I'd been to the White House to interview Mrs. Reagan, and she said, she was a dumb bitch when she was 19, and she's a dumb bitch now. And I said, but she's enslaved to the president. She loves him so much. She says, enslavement's what she's fit for. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. How about Calvin Klein? Calvin Klein talks about marrying uh, Kelly, Kelly Klein, and how that was a turning point in his life, because he really, for many years, was... Uh, immersed in a while. He, he's talked about it in an interview we did in Playboy magazine. He was uh, on Fire Island and living a very wild life and drinking a lot and drugs. And, and I think that marrying her actually stabilized his life and gave him uh, a chance to, to grow up. Because a man who's almost 50, it's not the same as when you're in your 30s or 40s. There's as lots can, of talk about him being gay. Yeah, I don't know. How do we know these things unless we can snoop into their bedrooms? And Have you done that? And I'm not snoopy. No. <laughs> Has anyone admitted to you that this was a pivotal moment in their life, coming out of the closet? You know, I really think that um, gay men and women who are famous have a tr still, despite all gay rights and everything, they have a tremendous problem with doing that because I think they're petrified they're going to lose their sponsors. Uh, there's been speculation about so many stars, even Dolly Parton. I asked Dolly Parton once, it's rumored that this woman you travel with is your lesbian lover, is she? And she said, no, she's my best friend. But I did ask her. What about Lily Tomlin? Well, Lily Tomlin, I think she's pretty out. I do think she's pretty out. But you, how many can you count that are out? Very, very few. It's unfortunate because I think the gay and lesbian community does need positive role models. I think we need more of them, and I think people are still afraid. Um, and maybe, you know, it'll happen more and more. Now, you also wrote a book on Vladimir Horowitz, right? Yes, and in the book, it was the first biography of Horowitz, who was the most famous concert pianist of the century, really. He died in 1989. I did talk about his bisexuality. He was married to uh, Tusc Arturo Toscanini's daughter, Wanda. And uh, they married in 1933, and he had relationships with men throughout his life. And they had one daughter, Sonia, who, who committed suicide in the 1970s. Wow. Now, this book is dedicated to your dog, Katie. Uh, not the Horowitz book, the Turning Point book, right? The Turning Point book. Yeah, because I said she's a daily reminder of, uh, of loyalty and love. Oh, that's beautiful. Who can be more loyal to you than your own dog, right? That's true. I'm trying to find somebody who would be as loyal as my dog, but so far I haven't found anyone. But if you have any ideas... You, you mean someone on two feet rather than four. <laughs> someone who's not crawling around on <laughs> four feet, right. It's preferably something who's a, uh, who's a little bigger than the dog. Yeah. Now, tell our viewers where they can get this great book, Turning Point. You can get Turning Point uh, at any bookstore, and it has a gold cover, and Elizabeth Taylor's on the cover, so it'll be hard to miss. And who is it published by? by um, Birchling Press. And it's available anywhere. 1995, please spend your money. And how many celebrities does it cover? 121. Wow. And you're working on another book, I heard. Yeah, I'm working on a book about couples who have been married 50 years or more. Terrific. What the secret of their love life is. And we'd love to know those secrets. Glenn Plaskin, let me thank you again for being on The Barry Z thanks Show. Thanks so much for having me. And we'll be back with more celebrities right after these messages. Don't go anywhere.